Pendientes de la situación de los mercados financieros son casi 20 los minutos que pasan ya sobre las 2 en punto de la tarde, hora central europea y la renta variable a esta hora a la espera de lo que pueda hacer Wall Street en apertura a partir de las 3 y media de la tarde, hora peninsular, la tenemos en zona de compras. Las mayores subidas las que presenta el FTC en la bolsa de Londres hasta los 7.400 puntos con una subida del 1,46%. El IBEX sin embargo revaloriza medio punto porcentual aunque consiga aguantar la cota de los 9.000 500. Esto en renta variable, en renta fija vamos ya con el análisis, vamos a hablar en los próximos minutos aquí en el plató de negocios televisión con Peter von Bonsdorf, director de negocio internacional de la gestora nórdica Epli. Thank you so much for being in negocios. Hey, thank you Javier. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, we, why uh, is the moment to invest in corporate bonds right now? Yeah, we're thinking about no, uh, European corporate bonds at mm -hmm. this moment quite a lot. And uh, we think that there, given the backdrop of economic growth, which doesn't look very rosy at the moment, we think that going into corporate risk is best done via investing into corporate bonds, because most of these quality bonds are unlikely to suffer very huge drawbacks should the economy uh, deteriorate. So we think that the companies are very well able to pay back their debts and to pay their interest uh, if they are good quality enough. Mm -hmm. So I suppose that it's better to invest in corporate than in government bonds. Well, you can think about it in two ways. If mm -hmm. you go into, um, if you wait expecting the interest rates to go lower, it's probably a good idea to take on more duration that is in longer dated bonds. However, Uh, there is a lot of credit spread, credit risk, extra premium that you can capture by investing into corporate bonds as well. So you need to look a little bit which one or maybe even both you might want to have in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, to sum up, uh, then longer or shorter daily bonds? Well, this is the tricky question here that we're trying to, trying to respond to. Um, I think or we think at Evely that uh, the, maybe the little bit of the shorter end is more interesting and it comes with a few points there. You have a lot of extra return in terms of risk premium that can be grasped. So we have in the three-year bonds are right now risk-free trading around 3% and if you can get another um, 3 percentage points, 2 percentage points risk premium above that and get your money back in two, two and a half years, we think that there is definitely a beef there. Now then is the question that what, is the, what if longer rates, rates come down? Can you get more return if you go into the longer end? Well, we think on a risk-adjusted basis, the shorter end with corporate bonds is actually a little bit tad more interesting <laughs> at, at the moment. A little bit more interesting, yes. Uh -huh. So, Edley uh, are focusing on Nordic uh, corporate bonds. Uh, why is this market interesting to, to investors? Well, right now the Nordic market is interesting the same way, way it was yesterday or, or last year is because there is a lot of quality companies that trade on even higher credit premium than you have on very large names in Europe. So for the same credit quality, uh, we think that you will capture an even higher spread. So if we can get on a shorter dated corporate bond portfolio, maybe some two percentages of extra return on, on a Nordic one, for the same maturity, we can get almost 3% on a diversified extra portfolio. So three plus three, that makes 6% yield to maturity at the moment. And that starts to be a good um, addition to any diversified portfolio. So that's what you get from the Nordic corporate bonds at the moment. Mm -hmm. In which countries are you... Are well, you when we talk about Nordic, we talk mainly about Sweden, Finland, Norway and Denmark. So it's four countries. So you take more risk, you take more country risk, but you also can get uh, some extra, extra yield from, from the most developed countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Which one are the risks you are talking about? The risks in... Um, well, if you take on a Europe-wide basis, the risks that we see at the moment is, of course, that if the European Central Bank continues on their interest rate hiking mm -hmm. trajectory, which we don't actually see as very likely anymore, but who knows what Lagarde has up her sleeve, mm -hmm. 
Um, second, we, we see that, that uh, the risk for companies not being able to pay back their debt or interest rate, that is what's called default risk. That has gone nowhere, but it's, if, we, if you are in, in uh, somewhere between the little bit more riskier and little bit less risk, riskier loans, we're talking about uh, bonds in the so-called triple B and double B segment in between there in the crossover you can capture very good risk adjusted returns so we think that is it's never a safe place anything can happen mm -hmm. but we think that companies are um, not going to default as much as maybe fed even though the economy is might be going going downwards so this is what we have on a european base in the nordic countries that has received some uh, negative press recently we see problems in real estate companies we see sweden, problems in sweden for example good example first time since 1870 since they have any real problems that they need to tackle so it's a little bit of a surprise maybe um, now mm, that has already been priced in into the prices of many of the bonds that are trading mm -hmm. so markets are efficient mm -hmm. so uh, now entering to those bonds well, it's probably a risky endeavor. I wouldn't advise to do so. But I think a lot of those risks have already been, been priced in, mm -hmm. which creates opportunities for the, for the diversified, uh, diversified portfolio investor, indeed. Mm -hmm. So that's the picture. Peter von Fonsdor, thank you so much for being in Negocios. Thank you, Javier. Bueno, pasan 26 minutos sobre las 2 en punto de la tarde, breve pausa para publicidad y seguimos con todo el análisis de los mercados, de la actualidad económica y política aquí en Negocios Televisión.